welcome back to the Women's Direction YouTube channel and our How to Make a Movie series. Now in this episode, we're going to be talking all things script writing, but I couldn't possibly do that alone, so I have in fact got a very special guest. Our special guest is an award-winning writer, director and creative producer who has been creating award-winning content since 2002. She was also my mentor in the Women in Film and Television Australia Mentorship Program back in 2020, and she's also just an awesome person. So please join me in welcoming Sunny Grace. Uh, so my name is Sunny Grace, and I'm a writer-director. Uh, I started, I made my first short film when I was 15, <laughs> like 1986. Then I ended up working in production for a long time as a production assistant and then up to producer in the advertising space when I had my kids because it was much easier than going away for long periods of time with films and things like that. Um, and then when the kids grew up and were pretty good to fend for themselves, I went to NIDA and I did my Masters in perform Master of Arts in Performance Writing. Um, and, yeah, since then I've been um, slowly but surely gaining traction as a, as a writer-director in the, in the feature film, TV and stage areas. Yeah. You were my mentor as well in 2020, uh, which was exciting, and then we actually got to work on a film together. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I won a competition for the actor mini short film pitch. So I got to um, make the film that I wrote as, and pitched. So, yeah, I was able to direct that. And, yeah, you came along and it was brilliant. Yeah, it was. It was, fun it was a lot of fun. Days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. yes, we are talking about script writing specifically today. So I guess I'll just start with your, what's your kind of approach to the script writing process like when you get an idea how do you sort of dive into writing what are your sort of steps okay so I'm not a plotter and planner I'm the opposite so I usually come from a very kind of um it'll usually be a character idea or a theme or an emotion that will trigger the idea for me and then I usually have like notes in my phone as I'm observing things in the world and if a character comes to me it'll get to a point where they want to start talking so then I'll sit down and just start writing um, and one thing I learned that's been really valuable since I started writing for the screen and just writing in general is to not censor or look back at the writing to start with just like get it out there because the minute that you start rereading, you start editing, the minute you start editing, you start judging and then that little critic on the shoulder comes in and goes, oh, this is maybe not so great. So, yeah, my first step is really just to write it out and then see what's there. And usually from there you'll see kind of which characters are working, what dynamics are working, and then, and then I'll go back in and do another pass on it that I feel is like that that's when I would come in and start putting in the structure in place for myself yeah do you normally follow through on most of your ideas or do you have like a massive pile of just abandoned <laughs> scripts <laughs> before I studied at NIDA I had a massive pile of abandoned scripts short films plays and novels and basically what I'd done there is it's that whole thing about perfectionism being like the, de the you know, it really does kill kill creativity and, and kills and it means that you won't finish a thing because what I would do with those is, yeah, I'd, I'd, um, I, I wouldn't show anyone either. So I'd just sort of write them, read them back, go, that's no good, um, give myself a really hard time because I was an overachiever at school. It's like it's not good enough throw it away sort of thing or put it in the bottom drawer and just leave it there and then start a new one and then repeat so <laughs> since I've since I've been at NIDA I mean I have to say like the script that I wrote at NIDA which was eight years ago seven years ago has just been picked up by a producer now and I've probably done maybe 13 12 to 13 passes on that um and I know that I need to do more to get it ready for the screen, but I'm not scared of it anymore. Like I know that over these years, just by writing, my writing's better. 
and my sense of structure because structure was always for me very off-putting I was very good at like the at night we called it the lull and I think in my favorite podcast of screenwriting life they call it the lava so it's like that thing of just getting the emotions and the characters onto the page I've never found that difficult yeah it's the then going back and trying to make it into something that other people will understand that I've always found um that's where my fear sets in so once again you kind of have to just go into that again going okay this won't be perfect but with each draft something will get better and sometimes things get worse again but then that's okay too because it will get better again yeah (laughs) (laughs) that makes sense you know yeah yeah sometimes I lose the magic along the way because my first always have lots of magic and 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 emotion and then sometimes I strip it back too much when I'm putting the structure in so it's really about trying to find that balance between the two yeah yeah no I think that was one of my (laughs) biggest questions for you today because I'm definitely that person that has a hard time showing other people my work particularly my writing I don't know why I get hung up on my writing but I do um so I guess you You've yeah. kind of touched on it, but what advice yeah. do you have for people like me who do have a really hard time with it? Like what should we work on in order to let people read it? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, we the the thing that really cracked it for me was that <laughs> at NIDA, our lecturer made us write a first draft without reading it back and then threw us in a room with the third-year actors, second and third-year actors, and said, you've got a week with these actors to workshop this script that you haven't read back. So it was like baptism by fire because in you Mm -hmm. go with these like really smart actors and you've got this, you don't even know what it is. But that's kind of the beauty, I think. But what I learned from that and subsequent like read-throughs and things like that with other people is um, you kind of know in your heart of hearts what's working and what's not working. You know, like deep down you will know. Um, So I find that, first of all, you have to take that perfectionist away because it's not going to be perfect. Like don't worry about it. Screen is a collaborative process. So there are so many things that will come on, you know, throughout the whole process, including the edit. So in a way that kind of frees you up because it's like this will never, this thing will never actually be perfect and finished. There will always be someone else coming in to interpret, question. And so for me, I think we work, I worked out a system where if I'm showing someone my work very early on, basically all I want to know is what doesn't work for them, what's confusing. So if they're reading it and they can't make sense of a thing, just tell me you can't make sense of it. Don't tell me it's wrong or why you can't make, just say, I don't understand this bit or what did you mean by this? So just be really clear with the feedback that you want as well, that really helped me. It was like, okay, this is my first draft. I know it's a bit of a mess, but I'm just looking for anything that you don't understand or anything that you really love in this or, you know, anything that um, sticks out as being weird in this world. And so that was, like, really helpful for me. I still have to remind myself of that when I'm sharing it with people because not giving notes is hard. And not everyone's very good at giving notes. So you also have to remember that because I think what happened with the Bower Girl is it actually became a bit of, that's my first script, it became a bit of a, a bit of a mess because when I started sending it to people after NIDA to try and get it produced, I was getting lots of different notes from so many different people, producers and directors, and, and they were all quite interested in it, but they all had their different points of view. And by trying to kind of take on board all those notes, I did lose the magic of her. So it's now, these years later, I found the producer that understands this script. She gets it. She knows. Like the questions she's asking are the right questions for the script, you know. And that's a thing too. Like if you're listening to someone critique your script and you just feel like they don't get it, you know, obviously take the notes listen for the note under the note, which is usually what's confusing them, but try not to take it too literally because it can really stop you in your tracks. Um, I guess when it comes to collaborating and getting feedback, what are some of the different ways that 
you've collaborated with others I guess particularly in the in the writing phase like do you work with co-writers do you do lots of acting reads like yeah well uh when I'm writing a feature script I tend to keep it to myself maybe a little bit longer because I've found that yeah I found that I really need to be protective of what I'm trying to say for a little bit longer than say with TV I'm working on something with um some other women at the moment when we're pitching um a TV series and it's it's like to be in the writer's room is like the best thing in the world if you have a great bunch of people in the room with you and to have all their heads in the room as well. I think it really depends on the type of, on the, on the type of script that you're dealing with. Yeah, I find producers are really useful for the, for my, the feature films. Then it's directors once it's to a point that it needs kind of more of that like less less emotional story notes and more notes of like how will we make this work you know or and the other thing and with actors too actors are fantastic because you write so much dialogue that you don't need you discover when you're having actors read it because they do it with their face mm. <laughs> and then you're like oh I don't need that like yeah that's all that's all subtext and that's you know you find I find that I overwrite the subtext because I'm trying to like it's a blueprint. This is what I'm trying to say, right? But once the actors get in and have it, the character, a lot of that can come come away, which is so beautiful. But it's good to have it there in the beginning. Yeah, I think it's always good to have it there for the actors in, um, so they know what you're trying to say and then you can strip it away with them because they're so smart. <laughs> I'm not the yes. kind of um, I'm not the kind of writer that is possessive to the point of craziness. Like I actually really love other people's input when it's the right time and if they're the right people. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. That's why collaboration is about finding your people. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it helps when you have the right people. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. In your experience. Is it easier to direct something that you've written or is it easier to sort of hand it over to someone else? What are the sort of pros and cons, I guess, of both sides of that? Okay, I'm just going to put this out there and I've said this to a few people and, like, um, I find directing easier than writing. I don't know. I feel like it's more cerebral or something. No, not cerebral. It's more practical it's a more of a practical thing than the emotional like heaving because my stuff's always usually based on some stupid trauma of mine so like heaving it out of yourself do you know what I mean um so so I find directing other people's work double-edged because I find it easier because I can kind of approach it with a, a director's head you know, like look at the page and go, okay, and work out what's going to happen and how it's going to sit visually and all of those things. Whereas when I'm directing my own, I feel comfortable because I know what I'm trying to say and achieve, but I also still have to silence the little critic on my shoulder that's like, is this good enough? Does this make sense? Even if we've gone down to like we're on set and at, at, at times, you know, so I think that I don't know if that goes away because I haven't directed a lot of my own stuff, but yeah, I like to I like to do it so that I can keep you know like anything like writing, directing. I think you get better the more you do. So yeah, with experience. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm working with a, a writer at the moment on her feature film as a director, and I'm really finding it um, like I'm trying really hard because I'm a writer to not be too critical in my (laughs) notes because I know what it's like to get them oh it's so hard it's hard but you know like as a director I have to like take that different point of view and go no I really need these things to make more sense or have more depth or we could smush these five scenes into one like so easily and and they're like what I'm like oh (laughs) (laughs) see what you can do come back and we'll see if we can you know what I mean so yeah Yeah. it's 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 that very similar thing I think to like that balancing act between the emotion and the structure no matter what you do no matter which process you're going through writing or directing it's getting those the balance right so that people can feel 
but also that the they can see it. Yeah. You know, I've spoken to a lot of women and featured their work on the blog and a lot of them end up being writer directors because they feel like that's or you know that ends up being the only way that they can actually get the thing made <laughs> in the yeah. end. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. it's kind of a common yeah. trend at least I've seen with like female filmmakers they sort of end up doing everything and wearing a lot of hats. I don't know if you've experienced that as well. Oh my god, yes, so much. Like um it's that thing about being taken seriously and and that was a problem I had because I'm 52 now. So when I was younger, I'm quite, you know, I'm blonde and I've got a bit of a high voice. And so I wasn't, I, it was it was hard to be taken seriously when I was starting out. Um, and so, yeah, you do end up doing a lot of the things, the things yourself just to make it happen because, you know, it's, it's still a, thing that some dude can have a short film that does well in the world and get given a 20 million dollar film um straight after that and it's much more rare for that to happen to female directors still to this day you know um I went to see at the Sydney Film Festival Bad Behaviour by Alice English who is um Jane Campion's daughter um which I actually really love just because it's quite bonkers, very different way of telling a story. I would say it has a very strong female gaze and, you know, it's just subverting all sorts of tropes. Um, but she was interviewed afterwards and she just, you know, that she was just like, well, no one's stopping me, so I'm just doing it because no one's saying no right now, so I'm just going to keep going with that. And I was like, that's such great, that's such great advice, you know. It's like. But also no one would ask a dude that. Do you know what I mean? Like no one would. And a guy would never say, oh, no one's, you know, I don't think that a man would say, oh, because they just, they they just, they let people let them do things and fail. That's the other thing. That's, mm-hmm. that's the other, that's the other trick about, about writing and directing is you have to, you have to let yourself make mistakes. And yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, we try so hard to be perfect. Um, as women as well you know we're judged much more harshly so once again it's about trying to give yourself the permission to play and learn and fail and pick it up again which I think is what I stopped doing for a long time I love being I love creating a set that is really collaborative where you do trust your people and you don't have to wear all the hats that's my favourite thing is when you have a really good team and you all trust each other. And it doesn't mean you don't have differences because you will have differences of opinion, but you can communicate and work it out and, yeah, and that's, like, the best. Once you've got a, you know, quote-unquote finished script because we know that it does evolve, um, what are sort of the next steps? Like, who should you be going to to try and get it made I guess yes well this is the big question um it is about trying to find the right collaborators so I was just I just spent two years living in the northern rivers and I was working um I was on a right from home initiative that was being run through screenworks with um uh, uh an Australian film um initiative based in New York and one of the women from that approached me and said you know we're all over 45 years old and she's like and we've all had you know sporadic credits but we've had kids so it hasn't been like you know the full consecutive it's been it's been tricky we don't have the credits so she's like let's you know form a collective so we formed the heroines collective and where it where just trying to help each other, support each other, women over 45 to continue going and not be stuck in a silo on your own, especially in a regional area. And so we, this is who I'm doing this TV series with. So we've been, um, we just thought, well, let's just try and do a thing. So we've we've been um, uh, workshopping that and we're getting some good responses. We've got some women in the group that are directing for TV for programs like Bump and stuff like that. So, you know, we're not complete novices. We do have some some you know contacts and it is about making contacts so we're applying for things through Screen Australia and sending it to different production companies and producers at the moment 
So we've got like a little Bible, a little pitch deck and a treatment. So that's, you know, that's one way to go. With my feature film, I finally got the producer that understands the project. So we're going to go and try and get some more development money. And then hopefully I can direct that one myself because it's something really close. It's about my childhood. So um, it's something that I know really, really well. But you just need to like send it out to people that you think have a similar voice to you in terms of the stories they tell. And, I mean, you can obviously do that by looking at, you know, reading IF magazine, seeing who's getting funding through Screen Australia, looking at their websites and things like that to see which production companies are producing what things. Um, yeah, or even just if you're just writing, you can approach a director that you think might be keen or an actor. You know, you can try through their agents and, and see. But, you know, it is it really is it really is a case of just not giving up and, and trying to get it into the hands of people that you think are a similar mindset to you. Yeah. Oh, and entering competitions, just to enter the competitions. Like I won the Actor Mini. Um, just enter the one. Don't enter ones that don't seem to give you much if they're asking for big fees, like there's a whole lot of websites that will tell you what the right ones are and where where's a good place to put your money if you're entering competitions because there are some out there that are a bit dodgy. So be careful with that. But, yeah, I've won quite a few competitions and, and I've won quite a few initiatives, which are really helpful because then you don't feel so alone. And do create things with your friends, you know, if you've got collaborators. I mean, I've got, luckily for me, I've got those women who I love working with. Um, we have our differences, but we work it out. And then I also have my colleagues that went through NIDA. So they're, you know, they're like anywhere from like 30 to 40. So they're quite a bit younger than me, but I love that because it's really good to have different people, points of view, worldview around you when you're a writer. Because that's really what you're doing in your script is having lots of different points of view, you know. It can take such a long time, you know, as we know. <laughs> yep. <laughs> this oh, producer definitely. has just picked up the Bower Girl. Now we've got to get some more development funding. Probably won't be making it, like, hopefully in the next three to five years. So that's a 12-year, yeah. <laughs> so you have to love the things that you're writing like you have to really love that especially your passion projects you have to really want to spend time with them yeah but you know you know if you want to stay with your characters they'll tell they'll tell you they won't leave you alone and always realize yeah that's that thing about it's never finished and the thing with feature films is once they leave your hands if someone else picks them up it's quite possible that you if they buy it outright you won't see it again so you just gonna have to go bye and then let the production company and the director and everyone do what they will, which is hard. Yeah. So if it's <laughs> your baby, baby, you have to try and, like, stay on as a producer or something. Well, <laughs> I think you've pretty much answered everything that I had on my list. But I suppose to round it out with maybe a fun question, what's your sort of favourite part? of script writing is it the dialogue is it discovering the characters is it the collaboration just what's what's the bit that kind of is makes you so passionate about writing I guess the thing that I love the most about writing is when the characters take me to unexpected places in the script and like that moment where you you're free of yourself and you're just like in this other world with these other people kind of talking through you. <laughs> I love that part, which then makes like the other part when you have to sit down and write and that's not happening, really like you're like, oh, my God, have I lost it? Is it never coming back? But it's it's there. You just got to keep going and it comes back. But, yeah, I love, I love that. I love it when I hear them talking. I like solving problems writing problems yeah now now that I'm in a position where I don't just shove it in the bottom drawer and forget about it because the problems are too big to solve like you can solve them and if you can't solve them by yourself do get some help because there are lots of big brains out there 
big, good story brains. Like I'm really lucky that I met through that writer's room that I was in last year for year of this fantastic story brain. So I just sent her a TV pilot first draft and she's just like, great, and gives me like six pages of notes. And, you know, initially I'm like, oh. And then I'm like, no, she's spot on. And then I go back in. So I've been going back into that today and I'm I'm so, having so much fun because she's helped me solve those problems, you know. So, yeah, I think that's the best thing about collaboration is being able to help each other solve the problems because, you know, it is hard, but it's the only thing that I ever want to do for the rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. <laughs> you you got to love it then. <laughs> oh, my God. You have to look to be a writer. You have to love it. You really do. But always just just do try to find the joy in it again. You know, if you if you lost, I've been there so many times. Just try to find the joy in it again and remember why you started in the first place and just take that stupid monkey off your shoulder. Yeah. Yeah. Because. Yeah, you, you've got this. You know how to do this. Don't you, Mackenzie? Yes. yes. <laughs> you have me. I can do this. <laughs> Thank you so much to everybody for watching. If you did enjoy this video, the rest of our How to Make a Movie series is available to view right now, right here on the Women's Direction YouTube channel. So go and check that out. If you would like some more new filmmaker tips and tricks, we have heaps of content over on our blog website, thewomensdirection.com. So go have a look at stuff over there. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you never miss any of our future videos. And I will see you in the next one. All right, bye.